All right, everybody, this is the last session of the day, last session of the conference before we go to the closing ceremony. So thank you all for hanging in there with us. Uh, we have uh, Matthew Thacker from Thoroughbred Af um, Aftercare Alliance, who's going to talk to us today about Maximize Power BI Report Insights with ChatGPT. There, that whole title is like buzzwords, um, big time. So I know there's a lot of people who'd be very interested in see where this thing goes. Uh, but Matt, I'm going to be over in ghost mode. And if you need anything, just let me know. I'll be monitoring chat for you too. All right. All right, everyone, like Ken says, so this is going to be just a very um, high level run through of utilizing chat GPT. Um, in your Power BI models. So there's a lot, I'm sure everybody's heard, there's a lot of just buzz going around about OpenAI and their their chat models and what it can do for coding, data analysis, just your everyday um, working. So what one thing that I wanted to do was figure out how I could, I'm mostly a Power BI developer, but I wanted to figure out how I could maximize my Power BI reports to bring chat GPT into Power BI and get kind of maximize those two tools together. So we are going to take a little bit of different approach. We're going to start completely from scratch, uh, bare bones, this entire process, and we're going to run through it uh, from start to finish in, in this. And I guarantee you something will probably go wrong. So I have a backup just in case. But um, so I want to just explain the entire process in case you you're you know you're newer to Power BI, little limited no experience to uh, the OpenAI Chat um, API because what we're going to do is be making making API calls to the Chat GPT um, using the Chat GPT 3.5 model um, that OpenAI has and bringing that into Power BI. So. Um, all that sounds fun, then we're going to go ahead and get started. So I think the first place that we best need to start is in OpenAI. So if you go to platform.openai.com, uh, you can sign up for access to the, their developer platform. Here's where you'll get your API key. Uh, that's what you'll, you'll need to be able to make API calls. So I've already signed into my account, I already have uh, active, but so that GPT allows you, or sorry, OpenAI allows you um, so many free credits uh, when you first sign up. I think it's 30 days or, or 5,000 tokens or something like that. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. So when you sign up for your account, get logged in, we come up here and we're going to go to view API keys. Hey, um, uh, for this. Matt, are you, are you meaning to share your screen? Am I not? No, no, it's not sharing your screen. Yeah. Good That's call. okay. We're, we're just right. live. No pressure. <laughs> All right. Better? There we go. Well, we see, uh, yeah, we see your choose what to share screen, and then it looks like you're showing your spatial chat behind that. Is is the, is the open API up yet? Uh, no. Okay. Try this again. Yeah, power, uh, spatial chat gives you like a million different ways to share anything and everything on your computer. Oh, uh, because I did window, not entire yeah. screen. Okay. Whoa. There we see your desktop. All right. There we go. Uh, all right. So. Rewind. All right, back to platform.openai.com. This is where you'll come uh, in the top right hand corner. We want to go to view API keys. Um, for this demo, uh, I'm going to just create a new um, API key so I can delete it and you all can see it. So, very important with the uh, Chat GPT API keys is once you create that key, copy it and put it somewhere because you cannot review it. Um, so we're going to copy this and put it somewhere safe for now. 
So that's the first step in getting started. So we're going to start with a very basic Power BI report. Um, I'm, I'm assuming everybody in here has exposure with connecting Power BI to Blackbaud. So I'm not going to, I've already got a model set up with kind of just the, the basic information, appeals, campaigns, constituent funds, and gifts, and calendar tables. So we're going to start with the basic model. And so the first thing that we want to do is we're going to um, we need a place to put the um, so the way this is going to work is you're going to take information via the Power Automate um, connector within Power BI. You're going to send a block of data to the chat GPT or OpenAI API. It's going to do its, do its magic, and then it's going to send a response back, and you're going to put that response and display that response in your Power BI report. In order to do that, um, kind of got to work within the limitations of what Power BI has to offer. So we are going to, we need a place to put those responses. So within um, within the Power BI workspace, we're going to we're going to create a new data set to house those responses that we receive from the API. So from the Power BI service, um, we'll go home and then I have a work. I have a workspace down here called development. We're going to go into that, and I want to create a new data set. Right. Oh, sorry. I want to create a new streaming data set. Um, because it's going to be taken, it's going to be um, live connected. So any, as soon as it, send, it gets a request, it's going to post that data and it's going to publish it right to your report. So we're going to do it via an, an API. Um, we're going to call this uh, BB Dev Days. And then we need to tell it what columns we want. So we're going to do a response. It's going to be a text value. And then to do that, just to get some better, we're going to do a date time and give it a date time stamp. Um, so we know what models and we want to preserve the historical data. So we're just going to hit create. So now we have a new streaming data set. So from the Power BI desktop, we want to um, use the Power Automate. And if I can move it, I wish I had a mouse. So we're going to add some data in it. Um, let's do an analysis by. Um, a constituent date and the amount that they have given. I don't know. So we have that. And now we're going to edit this. Now, now this, I don't know how many, how many people have started to work with Power Automate within Power BI, but once you hit edit, it's going to bring it in that Power Automate kind of UI experience within um, Power BI. And so from here, you could either create a new or use an existing flow. So for this purpose, we're going to use a flow. We're going to create a new one. So it's going to give it the initial step because it's going to, it's kind of kicked off by triggering this button within Power Automate or within Power BI. It's going to send package data in the form of flow in a form of an array of JSON objects. And so the first thing that we want to do is use the custom HTTP, HTTP connector. Um, and we're going to make a post request 
to the chat GPT or open AI. I keep calling it chat. Open AI is the company, chat, B, chat GPT is the model. So after we have this, um, so this is just the um, open AI API documentation. So it gives you all the information in terms of different types of models, how to make requests, um, all that information. So if you're not familiar with chat GPT kind of under the hood, so OpenAI comes out with different types of models. Chat GPT 3.5 and 4 are conversational models, so they're called um, chat completions. If you deal with chat GPT 3, um, they're called just uh, completion models. So they have different types of um, models, version versioning models underneath them. So chat GPT 3 uh, completion, you can have Da Vinci, Curie, they're all named after famous people, but they're all, um, you pose it a question or a statement and it does a completion analysis on top of whatever issue you gave it. Uh, the chat GPT 3.5 and 4 are chat conversation structures. So they take a different type of approach. You need to give it a what type of person is asking you this question. So you, you have what they call roles and it can be system user or assistant. And from that perspective, ChatGPT is going to take on that persona of that role and form it, formulate its response to you and to your prompt based on the role that you give it. Um, so we're looking at, we just need the um, HTTP request for this. So we need um, API, OpenAI, version one, chat completions, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the endpoint that we're going to make the post request to. In the headers, we need to do um, content, oops, content type, and it's going to be application forward slash JSON. And then we need to pass it our authorization. And in front of that code, it uses bearer. Um, so it's a bearer type token. And I just need to remember where I put it here. And then for the body, the body we're going to get from here, the, the type of parameters. So the model. Uh, chat GPT 4.0 uh, is only available to um, a very select small group. There's a waiting list right now to get access to it. So we're going to be using the, the chat GPT 3.5 turbo model. And so here are the parameters here. You, you need to pass it um, just the, the JSON object of the, the model, which is chat GPT 3.5. And then the message, the role, and that's going to be in a row, um, an array of values of role and message. And the reason, or role and prompt, I think. So the reason that it's an array is because you can actually say, um, you can pass it multiple um, prompts in the same queue or in the same request. So we have that. And if, I've already got it copied and pasted, so we're not gonna reinvent the wheel here. And one thing that I would advise, uh, one of the other parameters that it can take is max tokens. So after your free version of um, your OpenAI API usage runs out, you get you start getting charged based on the number of tokens. Each, mo each model is tokenized different, uh, there's an open AI tokenizer where you can put in your response and get a response back and it will tell you the number of tokens that you use. Each model has a different price point. Um, 
they're all relatively not not terribly expensive for um what you actually get out of it it's like i think the chat gpt 3.5 turbo response is um 0 0.0021 cents per per token per token per thousand tokens so rel relatively affordable but the way to kind of control that cost is to put your max tokens within um your api prompt so it will terminate the request will will terminate after you finish um after it hits that number of tokens and your tokens are counted based on the amount of prompt that's going in and the number of response the tokens and the response that you're getting so the sum of those two values is the total amount that you're billed for so here um so we have our our model our message and we're only going to pass it one message we're going to give it the role of user and in the content so you you can be very specific in how you so if you go to uh, chat gpt online and ask it if it can do an analysis on a subset of data it will give you within it will be a kind of a prompt of what the best terminology is to be able to for it to understand this is you're wanting an analysis of this type of data and this is kind of the general consensus so it's identify uh patterns and generate insights if i could spell for the following data and here i want to give it these are all the unique um power bi so in this first step when everything that's being passed in from power bi um, here's what you can give it so you can either give it individual components or you can pass it the entire power bi data set that's that's within the filter context of whatever you're pressing pressing the button um, it will per, it will pass that filter context into this power bi data it's going to pass it in the, um, by way of a, a json object so we're just going to say we want that and then the next step is because we did the uh, because in a, it is an array of this messages we need a um, apply to each and we want um, actually before we do that we want to parse the json to make our lives easier So we're going to get this body and then we're going to generate the schema and we can get that schema again from here from the documentation so you have your endpoint parameters and then it gives you the response that you you will take so we're going to go ahead and pass that response i knew that would happen All right, so quick change up real quick. So I had this issue last time and so what I did is I just took the contents from a example that did work. Right. Now we're gonna do the apply to each. And we want it on the content. I don't know why that did that. I'm 
built-in. So we're just going to put it into Power BI and let Power BI do the do the work. So we want to add rows to a data set. So here we're taking those messages that we're we're receiving from the API and we're going to append it to that streaming data set that we set up earlier. So we're going to add rows. And then that's in development. The data set is BP Dev Days, which I spelled wrong. And then we're just going to call it real time data. So here are the two fields that we set up in the initial um, when we set up the streaming data. So the first thing that we want is the, um, the messages. And uh, hold on one second. Oh, no, we don't want messages. We want content. And then that's going to put it in the loop. And then we want um, well, we're just going to say. So one thing that I haven't been able to figure out is you can't write expressions when uh, when you're in Power BI. Power when you're in Power BI, Power Automate within Power BI. So we're going to go ahead and call this uh, BB days. The way to get around that is we'll save this. Um, the way to get around that is saving it here. So we save and apply. And we will get out of it and go back to the report. And then if we go to our close, Please don't prove me wrong. There it is. So there it is in our flows and we can edit it from here and we can write the expressions that we want to be, to get into it. So I want to say um, format date time UTC now as uh, let's do let's do All right, and we'll save that. Now we need to come back to our, um, we want to get rid of that big square. So now we want, um, let's put a slicer on here, because let's say we only want to look at, um, Let's say we only want to look at 2022 data. And then we're going to put in a table. And we want to see um, what do we pass in constituent state and total amount. Um, let's do Next thing we need to do is we need to get that data set, that streaming data set that we had set up. So to get data, and then this is the one that we set. We're just gonna pick this, submit.
So again, this is um, a direct query connection. So we're going to throw another table on here just as an example. Um, and we want from the real time data, we want the response. Not doing something. All right. So here I have a table of gifts by, by individual states. That's in that for FY22. And now we're going to see, it's scary, but we're going to see if this works. So it's triggered. Come over here, see if it's successful. It's running. Running. It hasn't failed, so that's that's positive. <laughs> and I'll we'll spoke too soon. Um, just type no. Right, let's try to fix this. Oh, I know what I did wrong. All right, so that's why it's important to take the appropriate um, JSON response. Left out a left out a field. So, and we actually want this to be choices. And then within the choices, the content is there. Now we'll save that and we will try this again. So this is selected. Okay. Yes, succeeded. So here we're just gonna we just need to refresh our data sets. And once you have this published in Power BI service, um, you won't it'll automatically refresh the one table without needing to refresh um, all of your your NXT tables. But this is just dummy data, so it shouldn't take shouldn't take like terribly long. Okay.
Yeah, it's all the things we can run. What's content? Okay, so the reason it failed is because our um, it's too much text for the field. Um, so what we're going to do is come back here and say we're going to limit tokens to a thousand. Then once again, we will trigger. Then we will refresh again. Almost there. Ah, still nothing. Okay. Instead of there, not there. All right, so I won't have you all sit through a uh, while travel. I try to troubleshoot the issue again. I will show you when I did the demo of it the other day and try to set this up. Um, same concept, same information. So this is the um, So I gave it the same type of information, and this is the response that it it gave me. It gave me eight different insights to um, in the table that I passed in. Um, obviously, you'll see that some of them aren't always consistent with the actual information. So I did I did take some time to go in and troubleshoot, like how could I make my request more specific and get better responses and so you will need to kind of go in and do the nuance of asking asking specifically the type of information that you're you're wanting to get back and um, yeah so i really wish that i could have shown you that up here in but what we can do is Um, so we can look at kind of the what we had in Power Automate as to some of the insights that it provided in that in that run through, even though it didn't post to our data model. Um, so total sum of the total sum is fifteen million two ninety seven. State with the highest amount is Ontario, with X amount. Um, states with relatively low sums. Um, and it gives you those dates and those amounts. Um, and it, it just kind of gives you 
more insight into what you're doing. Again, this is just a very high level to give you the basics of how to start using ChatGPT into your Power BI. Power, you, it doesn't even have to be Power, Power BI. Um, with all of the single page applications that BlackBot offers, you can bring this information into um, a tile within um, NXT to build insights off of the information on a constituent record. The possibilities are really just endless. Just kind of wanted to get the conversation going. Hey, Matt, we did have a couple questions here. Uh, Jeremy Reynolds is asking, how could you tell that the uh, the content link was the problem? So when you cut it down from like 2000 tokens to 1000 tokens, was there something just your experience told you that that's what it was or? Yeah, with um, with as great as Power Automate um, exceptions or failure note, failure codes go, um, it's kind of just trial and error noticing what um, the because it gave me the content link was zero and because I know uh, you run into text limitations within um, the data types within Power BI. If you return too much, uh, Power BI will throw an error and it won't add that data set. Okay. Um, also, Ben was asking, he said, I didn't get a good look at it, but was the content within the message object? No, well, I think that's what you showed there uh, with the JSON breakdown, wasn't it? Say that again. He was asking, uh, was the content within the message object? But I think that's what you showed there at the end, right? Where the JSON broke out the the insights, broke out the content. Yeah, I, so it goes um, choices, content, message um, is your kind of your structural on the structural hierarchy on the um, key value objects within um, your response. Okay. Um, I like Isaac's. Pretty sure Chat GPT isn't very good at math. Um, let's see, uh, a lot of accolades, uh, any concerns with sending real data to open AI? I think that's a really good question. Thousands of concerns. Thousands. Okay. <laughs> Great. I so, say. um, I will tell you that, um, one way to, one way to kind of circumvent that is, um, if you can get your organization on the um, Azure OpenAI, um, so Azure or OpenAI is owned 49% by Microsoft. So they've incorporated all of OpenAI material into Azure being, uh, I'm not sure how many people watched uh, Microsoft build, but OpenAI, OpenAI is going to be pretty much spread throughout um the power platform going forward and so if you can get um if you can get on that chat gpt open ai for azure uh, beta then they do all the security for you um, i 100 really wouldn't recommend sending confidential information over chat gpt api um, so yeah there's lots yeah. of things you're looking for a summary, not a not a granular yeah. update on that. Yeah. Um, okay. So Joe is asking also security concerns are there. I think you kind of nailed that right there. And then uh, new releases nearly every day makes it a head spinning trying to. Okay. So Ed was saying to Joe, new releases every nearly every every day makes my head spin trying to keep up with it. On a on which version so all right anybody else got any questions for matt i know we're right at the end of time just want to make sure we get any kind of additional questions answered um you know one of the beautiful things about i said this earlier about spatial chat um you know you can stalk matt easily in here as long as he's in here so and then yes you are 100 percent correct now that i now that i think about it I broke the context when I changed the loop, so that's why I wasn't adding to the 